I'm going to speak to you today about breaking through into new realms. You know, we all get stuck. We all get stuck at times in life, and it seems like we don't know how to break through, we don't know how to move to the next level. And God wants to unstick those that are stuck. Did you hear me? We can all get stuck in a particular mindset. We can get stuck in a groove. We can get stuck in a, at a level in life. And God wants to unstick us so we can be all that God has called us to be. And today I want to speak to you about breaking through into new realms. God wants you to break through. And there's an anointing in Scripture called a breakthrough anointing. In other words, when we get to a place where we're now too big for our current circumstance... God helps us to break through. Like a baby that's grown too big for the womb, the environment that it's in is too small because it's continued to grow. And it's at that place where it needs to break out into a bigger realm, into a greater realm. And so too with us, the church, us as individuals, as God moves in our life, we sense this stirring, we sense this this something brewing inside. And that's not always a bad thing. Often that's God stirring us because he wants us to break out and to break through. Are you hearing me today? And so I want to speak to you today about breaking through into new realms. And and I believe with all my heart that the church, the church, general church is stuck. It's stuck at a moment. It's in a place where God wants to birth it into a new realm to touch our city, to touch our world. It wants to break the church mindset. It's so limited in its view of what it's called to do. So many people who come into the kingdom, who get born again, they come in and they get stuck in a groove, in a mindset, and they think this is all there is. I want you to know today there is so, so much more for you today. So much more. So much more. And the mandate that God has given us as a church and me as a, as a leader is to cause God's people to reach out for more, to believe for more, to believe that you are the hope of this city. You are the hope of this nation. God needs people to break through. It's not just up to God. God will empower you, but he needs people that would embrace a breakthrough anointing and say, God, even though I feel like I'm coming up against a wall, even though in the natural it feels like there's so much resistance and opposition, you have called me to break through. The word Hebrew that defines the Israelite nation literally means to cross over, to cross over from one dimension to another. And God has called his people to continually cross over, to break through. I know about you, but I want more. I want to influence this city. I want to leave my mark. I want to bring the kingdom mindset to our city. This city needs God. So we're talking today from the book of Exodus. Exodus is the second book of the Bible, Genesis, then Exodus. You say, well, I know that. Well, it's really important because Genesis is the story of God calling individuals and families. It's the story of election or God calling people. And we know that God calls people. God brings people into the kingdom. There's an understanding that God God has chosen me and he's called me, and that I am part of the kingdom. But that's what I said, most people stay there. They stay at this revelation that that I am now a son or a daughter of God, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to have a nice life, and that's where they get stuck. But that's that's Genesis, but Exodus brings us into a whole new realm. Genesis, Genesis is family and individuals. Exodus is about nations. It's about gaining an inheritance. Exodus is about breaking through. Exodus is about God making a clear division between... See, because Exodus is the second book. Two is the number of division. You can't divide one, you divide two. And so in Exodus, we see God dividing and showing a clear difference between his nation and all the other nations. There is a shift that happens from Genesis to Exodus. And I'm saying that because the breakthrough happens when God's people begin to understand that it's not just about me. It's not just about me being chosen and called and going to heaven. Not just about my personal breakthrough, my my blessing. But God has called me to change nations. Are you hearing me? 
And I know we go, yeah, 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 but, but do you really hear me that it's so much bigger than your personal breakthrough? As important as that is, there is a genesis. There is a calling of the individual. There is an anointing on the individual. God loves individuals. But so much of the church is caught up in their own little world, their, their, their nice house, their, their cars in the garage, their kids going to private schools, and, and, and that's their lot. They don't understand that the calling of God is far greater. God sees nations. God sees cities. God calls people, individuals, to change nations, to break through. And I'm here today to kick you nicely and cause you to break through to say don't stop don't stop in this place of God has saved me and rescued me but begin to see that there is much much more to have that's my introduction Exodus chapter 1 verse 5 so Exodus there is a clear shift in the economy of God from individuals and families to nations now, all those who were descendants of Jacob were 70 people. There you go, families, individuals. And Joseph died, so there's a cut. There's a shift from one realm to another. And all his brothers and all that generation, they're gone. But the children of Israel were fruitful, and they increased abundantly, and they multiplied, and they grew exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with with the Israelites. There, there arose a new king over Egypt who didn't know Joseph. And he said to his people, look, the ch- people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we are. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them. Lest they multiply and it happen in the event of war that they join our enemies and fight against us and soak up, up out of the land. Therefore they set hard taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities but the more they afflicted them the more they multiplied and grew and they were in dread of the children of Israel now verse 15 says then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives and he said in verse 16 when you do the duties of a midwife for the Hebrew women and you see them on the birth stools if it's a son kill them and if it's a daughter then let her live now verse 22 Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Every son who is born you will cast into the river, and every daughter you will save alive. We see in this story the increase of Israel in Egypt. We see the groaning of Israel under the oppression of the Egyptians. And we see the cry of their heart to be redeemed from slavery and be given an amazing inheritance. Now, as we look at this story, I need you to note, for Israel to keep increasing, the premise of their lives must change. Did you hear that? For, see, that they've got to a point now where they've grown so far, and now they can grow no further. The land is filled with the Israelites. There is no more room for increase. And often when we come to a place where we're stuck in life, it's because you have outgrown the season that you're in. You've outgrown the mindset that you're in and God needs to upgrade you so you can move into a new realm. Maybe some of the reason that some Christians are bored and unfulfilled is because they need an upgrade in their belief system. Because your belief system is way too small for what God wants to do. So you're in a holding pattern like these Israelites were. They've grown so fast and so, so much that now they are filling the land and they can't increase. So we need to upgrade our belief system, upgrade the way that that we think we need to upgrade our premise. Now, it says in Isaiah 54 that we are to enlarge the place of our tent. That word place is literally when you choose a site for your tent, you want to make sure that that site is big enough to sit your tent upon. It's about premises. It's about the way we think. It's it's about a belief system. And see, I, I have the opinion that 
If you don't increase your belief system, this is a problem for the Israelites. They were stuck under an old mindset, the Joseph mindset. Now, Joseph has died, and it's a clue from God. I am drying up. I am cutting off all those old belief systems. I'm shaking them because I want to upgrade you. Are you getting that? There's a new premise that I want to give you today. See, premises are so important if we're going to succeed in life. See, if you have wrong premises, everything goes haywire. I'll give you an example. Say you have a, a, a premise that I want to get married because I want to have children. That's the premise of marriage. I want to, I'm getting old and I want to have kids. So you get married and you either don't have kids or you do have. If you don't have kids, then the premise for getting married now becomes shaky because what you got married for hasn't come. Or else you have kids... And now you've got them, but do you now need the marriage? See, the premise was wrong. And when you have a wrong premise to go into something, it all falls apart. You might have a premise for business. And the premise is, I'm going to go into business because I want to have nice clothes, I want to pay my bills, have a couple of cars in the garage. That's the premise for business. So the the business succeeds, you get all those things, and then it goes into a holding pattern because the premise isn't right. The premise was about yourself and not about the kingdom. Are you seeing this? What you base your premise on, the belief system determines how big you become. And Israel's premise was all wrong. It was based on families and not nations. I want, you to, I want to ask you today, what's the premise of your life all about? Is it about yourself? Will you be successful if you have a new house and two cars in the garage? Is that success? Is that the premise or your belief system? What does it look like? What's the premise for being born again? What does it look like to be successful in the kingdom of God? Is it bigger than just yourself? So it says in Exodus 1-7 that the land was filled with the Israelites. That word filled means overflowed. It means to come to a place where you're now fenced in. So deliverance is needed to push them into a new realm because they have become stuck. It's like, as I said before, like a baby when it comes to the nine months and it's, it's reached a place where it cannot grow anymore and it needs breakthrough. It needs a deliverer. It needs a mechanism to get it out from where it is to where it needs to be. And this is where the Israelites find themselves. They are stuck And God wants them to break through. And the more you grow inside, the more your outer world is going to be changed. You see, because your outer world reflects your inner world. And as you grow and as you begin to press into God, it begins to make a a, a push or makes a demand on that which is around you. You will break through. And as you keep pressing into God and hungering after God, as you keep declaring the word, as you keep seeking his face, something will begin to shift inside you. You will get your breakthrough. Amen? Amen. Now, as we read this story, it's clear that Egypt is resisting this process. It doesn't want God's people to break through. And if you believe in the devil, I believe in the devil. I believe that there is a a force sent to oppose God's people. I mean, if you don't believe in the devil, just have a look around on the earth and see all the pain and the suffering. There is evil in this world and there is... There is great power that comes against God's people to restrict them. And there is opposition as God's people try to break through. And the moment you begin to press into God and begin to challenge the belief systems that you have, you begin to come against opposition. He opposes them. He kills all the boys because they represent our inheritance. Boys represent deliverance. Boys represent the ability to go into greater realms. And I'm not saying that girls can't do that, but in the scripture, boys represent the ones that, that in those days got the inheritance. 
And Pharaoh's saying, there is no inheritance for you. There is no future for you. And I will not allow you to break through. And so many times God's people, they begin to feel this shifting and moving and, and something stirring in their hearts. God begins to open their eyes to what he is seeing in the world. And they get a, a glimpse of God's picture for this world. And they come against opposition. And immediately, many of God's people give up. That is not a sign to give up. That's a sign that breakthrough is coming. There is resistance, but God is pushing and pushing and bringing breakthrough in your life. See, Israel's living in a place that God has never promised to them as an inheritance. And many Christians are, because they're stuck, they're living in places that God has never promised them. Your inheritance is tied up with nations. Your inheritance is tied up in people in your street, in your workplace, in this city. Your inheritance is so much bigger than you. But they're stuck in a place that God has said, this isn't your inheritance. I've got way more than this. No matter how hard they worked in Egypt, it would never, ever be theirs. And there are many Christians that are working hard, they're striving, they're, they're, they're going about their duties, but they're tied up in assignments that are not part of their inheritance. See, Egypt's a picture of independent living. They're in a place where there's no inheritance and they're doing it all in their own strength. And there's no inheritance. See, your inheritance is tied up with God's supernatural power. Your inheritance is tied up in what God sees and what God calls you to do. And it'll be way more than what you could ever do in the natural. Yeah. And so they're just, they're just going through the motions, clocking in, clocking off. But they, they are never getting ahead. They're never finding God's inheritance for their life. And Egypt's all about independent living. How do I know that? Well, there's no rain in Egypt. Even to this day, if you look at the map of Egypt, in fact, the places where it rains the most, I think there's about 20 mil of rain a year. And there are places in Egypt where there is no rain. So rain, the Bible coming from heaven, is a picture of God's people depending on heaven for their sustenance and their reward. They're looking up to God for breakthrough. So Egypt gets its rain from another place. Rain comes to another nation. It comes down in the form of the River Nile. So they're saying our sustenance is from below. They look down at the river rather than up at heaven. And so Israel in a land where it's all about independence and defying God. We don't need you for our inheritance. We can get it ourselves. Thank you very much. And that river was the very thing that swallowed up God's people and took away their inheritance. The more you rely on independent living, the more the enemy will steal your inheritance. They, they drown the baby boys in that very place. You and I cannot afford to go through this life independent from God, doing our own thing, chasing our own inheritance. We need to get before God and say, God, what is it that you have for my life? I want to hook into that. Break through on my behalf. God, what do you see for my life? Help me to break through into your realm for my life. So, as we look at this story, we see that God has an inheritance for his people. And it comes as we move into new realms. Do you know the Bible says in Micah chapter 4, verse 1, it says, It will come to pass in the last days... And many of us believe that these are the last days. There is a lease on the planet Earth. If you read the book of Genesis, it shows you that there is seven days assigned to the Earth. Thereabouts. And a day in the Lord is like a thousand years. So you read the creation. The seven-day creation is a map, not just of creation, but how the world will begin and end. So as you study that, you begin to see that each day... Pictures what God will do. And we're in the last of the days. And it says in Micah 4.1, It will come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house, listen to this, shall be established on the top of the mountains. Where did I say? On the top. And they will be exalted above all the hills and people will flow into it. What do mountains represent? 
Well, you know, if you've read my book, The Gospel Calling to Noah, the seven mountains represent the seven places or the seven mountains of influence in society, business, government, family, education, and so forth. You can read about it in my book. But Micah says in the last days that God shall be a stop, sorry, God shall be established on top of all of the mountains. It means that there shall be a kingdom expression in business. What does it look like to do kingdom in the business realm? It's like this, where everybody prospers, where everybody succeeds, where one doesn't get ripped off for the other, where the poor are given a hand up to get out of their poverty, where we see an eradication of those that would take advantage of the poor and the needy. And part of our mandate in this church is both to nurture the rich, but also to lift up the poor, to say there is another way to do business. You don't have to rip off the poor and the vulnerable to get ahead in life. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs 28 that those who extract, who take away from the poor via interest and and, and usury, the Bible calls it, it says the money will be taken from them and given to those that look after the poor. So we need to begin to believe that there, there will be a shift in the economy. And it says in Micah that God is elevating the kingdom expression over every mountain. You may say to me, well, I don't see that yet. Israel didn't see an inheritance when they were stuck under hard labor in Egypt. But God had a plan to break through. And it's all built on this that God's people begin to get a new premise for why they are here on planet Earth. This city needs you to begin to see what God is seeing. Am I making sense today? We begin to see that I'm not just here to go through life, but I'm here to bring kingdom expression to this city in the realm that God has called me to minister to. And God is shaking Israel out of slavery so it can maintain, so, sorry, so it can go into its inheritance. Micah 4 verse 1. So now let's go to Exodus again, chapter 3 verse 4. Exodus 3 verse 4. And the Lord saw, sorry, so when the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside, so now God is calling Moses to rescue Israel out of bondage, like he's calling you. And God called him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. And he said, Don't draw near this place, take off your sandals of your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. He says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look on God. And the Lord said, I have seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry because of their hard taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land. Did you hear that? God has heard the cry of his people. God has seen the bondage and the affliction. And he says, I'm about to move. I'm going to deliver them and I'm going to bring them up. I'm going to take them out of a place where they are constricted and I'm going to enlarge them. See, the enemy is about confinement and containment. God is always about releasing people and enlarging them. God is about setting nations free, about setting cities free. And he's called Moses, and he says, Moses, I'm picking you. I want you to go and tell my people I'm about to deliver them and I'm about to bless them and enlarge them. My question as I read this story is, why so long then? 430 years. You think about it. 430 years under bondage, under small thinking, Get into a place where you feel like you need to, there's something more, but not knowing what it is. And God calls a man and says, I want you to go to my people that are stuck in a rut and call them out of that into a place of promise. See, the place where they were going was Canaan. And Canaan was too big for a little family of 70 to inhabit. So God allows Israel to build and build and build and build and build and build until they're ready to occupy the land that he has for them. And what God has been doing in his church is building, stretching, prodding, poking, causing people to question, getting them ready 
to begin to position themselves in places of influence in our nation. The church hasn't been ready. That's the truth. There's been so many small mindsets. I've joked about it with you, but the church has been doing raffles and selling cakes and doing all sorts of crazy things to try and keep their doors open. And that, my friend, will never prepare a church to occupy a city, change the nation, bring God's mind. Really? Has God resorted to selling cakes to change the world? And my church will be on top of the mountains selling cakes. <laughs> and we shall change the world. The gold and the silver is mine, the birds, the cows, but I need some cakes sold. Anyone for cakes? <laughs> Canaan's too big. And in Genesis 15, 6, he says to Abraham, he tells Abraham, your family, the people of Israel, they will stay in Egypt for 430 years for the iniquity of the Amorites has not yet built up. In other words, he's saying there's judgment coming on the world system, the corruption of the world system. There's judgment coming. Make, make no doubt about it. God will judge every wrong system, every system of corruption. The Bible says that righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. God's not blind. God doesn't turn it away. God's not ignorant. God sees everything that takes place. And he's saying, it, it is all building, 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 building. I'm a merciful God. I call people. I challenge them. I speak to them. And at the same time, the church is building, building, building. And there will come a time where I will execute justice on every wrong system. And I will replace it with my system. Are you, are you hearing this? And we think, well, such a long time. God doesn't waste the day. God doesn't waste the day. So he calls Moses. Poor old Moses. He's 80 years old now. The best years are gone. You know, what used to be strong sagging now. He thought he was called as a deliverer. He saw the need, but God hadn't sent him. And God often unqualifies those that think they're qualified. Those that think they can do it themselves and they go off on a tangent, they see a need, but God hasn't sent them. So he spends 40 years in the wilderness being unqualified and then God calls him. When, when it's all like, okay, I can't do it, God says, now you're ready. Now I can breathe upon you and anoint you for the task that's ahead. And some of you think you're unqualified, that you don't have the ability, you don't have the education, the IQ. You don't need any of that. You just need to be sent by God. Yeah. That's the issue. As you wait upon the Lord and hear him, he will begin to speak to you about what needs to be done. And you will go in his might and his strength. The task is too great. The greatest minds have come together in this nation. And we honor them that have gone before us. But none of them have been able to solve the problems of this nation. Have they? It's too hard. Because we're dealing with issues of the heart. We're dealing with, with spiritual issues that rest on cities. And they can't be solved alone with man's intellect. We need the might and the power of God to do this. Amen. One man sent by God confronts the systems of Egypt, the mightiest nation. And one man stands before him and he delivers God's people. One man, unqualified, standing on the authority of God and the wisdom of God. And he opens his mouth and all of a sudden he begins to execute justice on every system. And that's what the plagues were about. They were undoing every unjust system. Everything that stolen people's inheritance. Why did the uh, Nile River turn into blood? Because it was the very same place that had stolen people's inheritance. And God says, that's enough. I'm sending a man. And that could be you today. I'm sending a woman. Someone who gets a vision from God, hears from God, gets a strategy from God and steps out in faith. Just imagine. He's unqualified. And he says, Moses, Moses. Now, God's not forgetful. Moses, no, Moses. No, he wasn't that. Moses wasn't hard of hearing. 
But whenever we hear and see God calling people and, says, and, they, and God repeats their name, he is calling someone to a task that is so solemn that it will require all of their life, all of their energy. Wow. Paul, Paul. Moses, Moses. He's calling someone. And today he's calling you and he's saying, I want you. I want you to lay down your life. I want to use you. Will you give me your life? And that's why he says to take your sandals off because it's holy ground where God calls a man or a woman and that man or woman understands the depth of that calling. And, and there's something inside my heart that cries out for this city that says, God, use me to touch this city. And I've wrestled with it. I've prayed over this city. I've looked out my window and I can see Houses upon houses, I have an amazing view over the eastern suburbs. And I cry out and say, God, give me this city. Cause me to father this city. Cause me to bring justice to this city. And it's holy ground because God calls a man and a woman and they understand the, 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 the enormity of that calling and how ill-equipped we are and we say yes. And God says, that is holy ground. That's holy ground. It's holy to God and it's holy to you. It's a place where you do business with God. You say, God, I realize this is no longer about myself. I, I don't care about the things of this world. I, I only care about serving you. And yes, Lord, you want to bless me, but I see the big picture. And so many Christians are caught up with blessing about themselves. And God wants to bless us. But God wants us to, to see the big picture. There is a nation and a city that God longs for. Yeah. It's inheritance. Yeah. Exodus 6 1. And the Lord said to Moses, Now you'll see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand and under compulsion, he will let them go. I don't want to say today that it doesn't matter what system the devil has set up, no matter how impenetrable it may seem, when God begins to move, Pharaoh is no match. Are you hearing this? And God spoke to Moses and said, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, Lord, I was not yet known to them. There's a lot about that that I don't have time to go into. But essentially, let me say this. God's about to reveal himself in such an intimate way to this generation that previous generations have not known. They knew him as this name. Like, it wasn't the first time that God had used the name Jehovah. He'd used that before. But what he's saying is, is this. I'm about to fulfill all that that name means and give you an understanding of that name like no other generation has had. And we're in the privilege of this generation of getting fresh revelation, fresh understanding of what God wants to do. I grew up in church where the mentality was, don't worry about the world. It's going to hell. Just, just hang on there because Jesus is coming and he's going to rapture us all. And, and that's it. This earth is a mess and don't care about it. Don't get educated, don't have any money, don't buy a house, don't, don't put your roots down here because our home is in heaven. Yeah. And this generation that I'm living in right now, something has shifted. We're beginning to see that God loves this nation, yeah. God loves the world, that, that he says on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. God's plan is, is to rule and reign. He is sitting in heaven waiting for his enemies to be made his footstool. God is... is totally committed to fulfilling everything that the sacrifice on the cross meant. And he is going to have nations that will bow down before him. He will see his kingdom come. He is not a loser. He is not a quitter. He will not bail out the church. He is waiting for the church to rise up and be all it's called to be. So 10 times Moses went to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. And Pharaoh tried to negotiate with Moses. Well, you know what? You can go, but leave your children. Leave your Porsches. You can go, but... And Moses said, no. It's not, it's not a game. We're not compromising. We're not negotiating. It's not like just a little bit of legislation getting through here or a little bit of a victory here. No, God says, I want it all. I want my kingdom to be expressed 
on planet Earth. Not just a few people here. Forget that suburb. Let's rescue Croydon, but don't worry about Ringwood. God says, no, I want it all. I love people and my will will be done. Moses said, I will not negotiate with you. The devil loves to negotiate with people. Well, just come to church on Sunday. Do what you like from Monday to Saturday. Well, just give a little bit of an offering. Keep the rest for yourself. You know what? Um, don't, don't bring your mind to the kingdom. Use it for your workplace, but don't think in church. Compromise, compromise, negotiation. God says, it's all, 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 all. Let my people go. There was breakthrough coming. I want you to know today that the anointing that God brings his people is total breakthrough. Total breakthrough. Total breakthrough. Are you hearing that? Exodus 1.12, I read that to you before. It says, the more they afflicted God's people, the more they multiplied and grew. That word grow or groom is the Hebrew word parats, P-A-R-A-T-S. It means to break out, to break out. We're not just, a few of us going, we're all going to break out. We're going to break out. We're going to take the lot. We will break out. God's anointing is on his church to break through. To receive all that he has for us. Are you hearing this? All of it. See, because to break through indicates that something's been closed and shut off. There are whole realms that are being closed and shut off to God's people. Don't get involved in business. Don't get involved in government. In fact, in in areas of government, the church is actively discouraged by places, media, etc. in getting involved. You know, church... And state are separated. Who said that? Who said that? Why is it only unbelievers and the atheists that are allowed to have any influence on government? Who said that church and state have to be uh, cut off? That's garbage. This nation was built on Christian values. Every nation you see where God is exalted, where Christian values are honored, those nations prosper. It's not rocket science. Breakthrough. We want it all. Breakthrough. 1 Samuel 3, 1, you don't need to look it up, but it says that in the days of Eli, there was no widespread revelation. And that word widespread is breakthrough. And the church needs this revelation of breakthrough anointing, where God says, I will call you and I will cause you to break through. You may be stuck, but I can unstick you. I can cause you to break through. You may be trying to, you may have seen something from God and you've tried to step out and there's been resistance. God says, I can break through for you. I can do it for you. I called Moses, who felt so unqualified. He said, I can't even speak. You'll have to get Aaron to speak on my behalf because I, uh, I can't speak. I, I haven't got it together. God says, you know what? If, if you need Aaron, bring him along, but I can flow through you. I will be like as God through you and Aaron will be your mouthpiece and you will speak to Pharaoh and you will break through. Yeah. Breakthrough. Yeah. All. The significance of breakthrough is that you never go back. You break through. When you have a medical breakthrough, it means that you've stepped into a realm that is a whole new field and you never go back. Breakthrough. I want you to think about it today. Breakthrough. God wants you to break through. He wants you to break out of that old mindset of survival, of, of just thinking about yourself, of being, of feeling like you're intimidated or you're restricted. God wants you to break out of that. Yeah. We often do this as a family. You know, I take my kids and I say, you will not be small thinkers. So we drive through Turak. We drive through all the lovely streets. I say, I know the person that owns that house. I've been inside that house. I take them to the finest places in the city to eat. And I'm trying to cause them to break out of any small thinking. I say to them, you will be great. God will use you and bless you to change this city. Cause them to break out of every limitation. Because they go to places that try to condense them and shrink them. And it's my job as a father to enlarge them. I said to them when I was growing up, and I don't say this to shame anyone, but maybe it was just me, but my mindset was so small. I didn't even think about doing anything great. But not now. This generation, God is breathing on to break out. Yeah. To be, and I see people even in this church that when I first met them, 
You know, they were lovely people, but they weren't doing anything amazing. They weren't, they weren't believing for great things. But I've seen some of these people, and they're just, just people, just like you. But they began to break out and believe for more. And I'm watching with amazement as God breathes on them and blesses them because I've heard God call them and say, I can use you. Something's gone off inside them. And they believe that they could be a channel to bless the world, to bring breakthrough, to bring inheritance. And God is doing that. It's you. My job is to enlarge you. So not just for my own family, but I say to you, believe for more. Break through. Get out of this mentality that's just about me. God wants to breathe on you. You go, but how, how, how? I've got no education. I've got no money in the bank. God came to a man in the backside of a desert looking after sheep and he called him. Yes. And this is the thing. Moses was walking through the desert and he happened to notice out of the corner of his eye a bush on fire. And he turned aside. That's the key. You'll be going throughout your day and you'll hear something. You'll hear God speak. Ah, and see, most of us put that out of our mind. Oh, that's so silly. Oh, God, God, never do that to me. And we go past the burning bush. And that burning bush was an invitation to a holy experience with God where the moment you say yes to his extravagant dreams, all of a sudden he begins to download on you. Mm. Have you had that? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you begin to dream. Oh, I have some amazing dreams. God's enlarging me. He's enlarging me. Because he wants me to break through. And I love this story and I haven't had time to go through it all. But as we read through this story, God executes justice via the plagues on every stronghold that Pharaoh had set up. And it says in Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, 12 is the number of government. God's bringing his government to supersede, to go on top, to rise up over all the other false systems. And it says that God judged all the gods of Egypt. Exodus 12, verse 12. Pulled them all down. And the final judgment was on the firstborn of all the children. He wipes them out. Now that sounds drastic. But God's saying to us, you know what? Everything that the enemy stolen from you, do you remember Moses in the river? Do you remember the time when the devil came and he stole God's inheritance? All those children that suffered, I'm going to take back everything that the enemy stolen. So the firstborn was about inheritance. The firstborn son got a double portion. And God's saying, everything that the enemy has stolen, I want to give back to the church. I want to give back to people that love God. I want to give back to people that love people. I want to give it back to people that will serve this nation. I will restore everything that's been stolen. And we say that's impossible. It's impossible. I mean, I just open up my paper in the morning and I think, how, how could this ever happen? Do you ever think that? But our job we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written. We believe and therefore we speak. And so I say, God, it looks impossible. But that's okay, for with God all things are possible. I don't know how he did, but Egypt was too big and too cruel and too strong for Israel to ever get out of. How, listen, how could it be that on the day or the eve that everyone escaped Egypt, and Pharaoh let them go and said, go, be gone. How was it that the Israelites could come to every Egyptian and say, can I have your gold and silver? And they said, sure. Here's the safe. Take what you like. How could that happen? How in one night could Israel plunder all the wealth of the Egyptians? Why did they chase after them? Because they had their gold and silver. What am I saying? God can do in one night. He can shift something. He can bring an opportunity. He can bring a revelation, an idea, a breakthrough that you could never do in one night. And the night before, it looked hopeless. When they applied the blood on the, on the doorpost, before the angel of the Lord came through and destroyed or killed all the firstborn, before that night, it looked hopeless. 
But in one night, the angel of the Lord came and he pronounced judgment on Egypt and God's people were set free. How? How will it work? I don't know how. But I do know that God calls deliverers. He calls people like Moses who will stand before Pharaoh and say, let my people go free. It begins with God's people beginning to understand they're sent by God to change nations. Then they begin to agree with what God is saying. So who do we speak to? We begin to speak over our city. We don't see a pharaoh. We don't have a pharaoh in front of us. But we have, the Bible says, evil principalities and powers that influence false systems. So we speak to that. That looks like we're speaking in the air. But we know that the weapons of our warfare aren't carnal, but they are mighty in God to pull down strongholds. And as we speak, things begin to shift. Imagine, imagine. If all the church, every day when they got up, began to speak and begin to bind and condemn every false system over this nation, every system of injustice, and began to speak and then begin to look for opportunities to bring breakthrough. Imagine what would happen. Breakthrough into new realms. He wants the church to break through into new realms. New realms of influence and blessing and authority. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, that's way over my head. Is it really? Is it really? So you're saying to me that God couldn't use you? Forty years in the desert, learning to be nobody. So God could choose him to set a nation free. I look around this room today and there's no one that God can't use. But I don't know my Bible enough. Oh, sorry, I I forgot that. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Well, I haven't been educated. Well, God chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. So no flesh would glory in his presence. He doesn't want people to boast and say, you know what, that breakthrough, that was was all about me. That was me. That was me. No, he wants to have the glory. He wants people to look at him as the deliverer. You are more than able. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He has called you to be an influence. So where do I start? Well, start with this. I said that to the Lord, where, where do I start? Start with a faith grid that believes this. And this is what I found God saying to me. I'm looking for people that believe what I believe. Well, what do you believe? I believe a nation can be changed in a day. I believe like Samson, that he can do more in one day than in a lifetime. I believe that this city is able to be reached by God. And say that each day, Lord, this city belongs to you. You're bringing down every false system and your kingdom is being established. When you go to your workplace, just speak it out over your workplace. Let your kingdom come to this workplace. Use me. I speak this today, that you are king of kings and lord of lords over this city. Just begin to do that. If nothing else, will you do that with me? Just begin to declare it each day. This city belongs to you. And watch the atmosphere change. Imagine if all the churches right across this city began to take their authority, like Moses. God said, let my people go free. He would send his angels to do what we couldn't do. See, we're waiting for God. God's waiting for us. It's a standoff. (laughs) The church is saying, come, Lord, quickly. He's saying, I will if you get on with it. (laughs) It's like, you begin to speak, I'll begin to move. You begin to believe. While you're caught up in all this unbelief, I cannot move, and I will not come until you believe. So let's start, let's believe, let's press in. Let's say, God, use me. And you watch what God does. He will do miracles through your life. Mighty miracles. He will open doors that no man can shut. He will give you the privilege of speaking to people in great authority. Just somehow there'll be a chance encounter. And you watch what God does. He'll give you ideas and opportunities. He will speak to you like he did with Moses in the burning bush. He'll give you strategies. He'll whisper to you things that are about to come. See, the world doesn't know tomorrow, but God does. He will tell you what's about to be unfolded. He will position you like he did with Moses and Joseph for greatness. 
breakthrough into new realms. Can we pray today? If you're comfortable, I just would encourage you just to lift up your hands. We do that because it's a sign of surrender, but it's also a sign that, Lord, we need to receive from you today. And, Lord, you've spoken to us today. And all that's come through this message, the spirit behind it, the minds behind it, we say yes to, Lord. We say yes to you using us to be a deliverer. We say yes to you, Lord, causing us to break through into new realms. We may be stuck, Lord, but today we're saying, unstick us. We sense you stirring in our heart to do more. There's got to be more, and it's, it's you, Lord. You're causing us to believe for more. It's not just about individuals and families, but it's about nations. It's about mountains. It's about great influence. It's about our city. And in the natural, it seems hopeless, but we aren't those that walk by the natural. We thank you that your super is on our natural and you make us supernatural beings. You give us great ability. So I pray for every person here today. Father, quicken them by your spirit. Cause them to know wherever they find themselves this week that you are with them and for them. That you are breathing breakthrough. Where they've come up against resistance. And there are people here today that you've come up against resistance and you've been tempted to give up. God's saying, don't give up. Let me work with you. Let me breathe on that place of resistance and bring breakthrough. Father, you are the God of breakthrough. And I pray that you would bring breakthrough today in the lives of your people. Lord, bring breakthrough in their workplaces and in this city. Enlarge us today, Lord, cause us to jump into new realms, new realms. We step into new realms with you. For some of you, God's going to ask you to take risks, to step out, to be bold, to be confident. He's spoken to you, but sometimes you've shut down that voice because you thought you couldn't do it. He's got new realms for you to operate in. Some of you have been stuck in cycles and it's, it's, it's become monotonous. And if you're honest with yourself, you know there's more, but you're scared. He's saying, come on, step out. I am with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. In fact, the life that you've chosen to live is really not what I called you to be. It's a false life. Step into what I have for you. I've got breakthrough for you. I can break you out of all those negative cycles, that negative mindset, and bring freedom today. So we receive that today in Jesus' name. As your hands are raised, I just want you to picture God filling you with his ability and his power. Thank you, Lord. 